the standards-based framework um, gave us a really important tool for teaching about religion, for teaching about civilizations, different societies, and so on. And that was that you have a yardstick. And if, if one group is, is, has a coverage that includes certain categories of things, then they all should or don't bother, right? Because what students don't learn about, they generally assume they don't have that. And that's one, one thing that's been really endemic in the way other uh, civilizations have been taught. Um, you know, did they have a great man? Did they have an empire? Did they, you know, what did we get from them? And we'll talk about that later when we talk about world history. But there are certain things that should be there because if they're not, students will imagine they don't exist, they don't have that. It's not as advanced, you know, a society or a religious uh, tradition. So among those things, of course, are accurate discussion of the basic beliefs of each faith, and that is according to the guidelines that I just shared with you, not academic secularism as some kind of um, lowest common denominator. The next one is traditions, institutions, and social change over time, not just moving over from religious history into political history, this dynasty, that dynasty, the other dynasty, with which whatever empire uh, religions are supposed to have become associated with over time. That, that just really doesn't work well for a lot of reasons. Another thing that should be there is the spread and current distribution of religions and significant minority populations. Not a Muslim world, but where in the world do Muslims live? Well, the answer is in most countries of the world, in one amount or another. And it's, uh, by the same token, in the Muslim world, are people of many other traditions living side by side as well for the past 1,400 plus years. And that's often you know, thrown out because we make maps that have all this color in the nation state, or all that color. And, and we call them things like the Muslim world and the Western world and stuff like that. Um, another one that is often neglected but should be part of this sort of yardstick is religions in early modern history or in on the course of, of, of modern history. Uh, because religions in the world did not die after the Enlightenment, we ought to know that as Americans for sure, um, but definitely in the rest of the world as well. And so it's important also to cover contemporary religious expression and not just modern fundamentalisms that are, you know, seem to be troublesome somehow to the to the social um, calmness of the, of the water. Um, on the other hand, with all this information that we're seeking to impart through this framework, um, we ought to get beyond the exotic and ask ourselves, why are we even doing this? Why would we place a value on teaching about religion in public education in the civic space? And so that requires us to go beyond sort of building a curio cabinet full of strange practices and interesting rituals and uh, other people's stories of prophets and religious leaders and so on. And that ought to be so that we can understand where we share values. And I think most everybody who's ever taught about religion or dabbled in them or sought themselves knows that religions share many, many um, common values. And those are the sort of foundation that we can use in our civic space for discussing all sorts of issues, whether it be the environment or uh, income inequality or, you know, the arts or whatever it happens to be, or even funding for the arts and humanities. So this needs us to go beyond just learning what ritual A, B, and C is in each tradition, but also to know what they mean. What do they mean to the people? Um, what effect do they have on societies? What communal and individual significance do they have? How do they change the society where they are practiced? What are their spiritual aspects and what other things come out that affect the politics and the um, uh, you know, social framework and, all, and so on? And then, of course, what cultural influences that gets into cultural studies, um, art and architecture and literature and so on. <coughs> 